Hey, Austin here. Just going to do a quick review of the Intel DX58SO motherboard. Okay, so now for the unboxing part. Uh, yeah. So we just have SATA cable, SATA cable, SATA cable, SATA cable. Um, 40 millimeter fan for the chipset cooling if you need extra cooling for that. Um, and the fan mounting bracket. Crossfire bridge, you have two ETI graphics cards. Um, infrared add, liquid cooling add. <laughs> um, let's see, solid state drive add. <laughs> And we have the drivers and software for it. Um, you should probably download the BIOS and everything uh, off of Intel site since it's probably the most updated version. But it does come with a lot of extra and helpful software on there. A ton of bundled software. And also Far Cry 2. <laughs> uh, they, these are screws for the fan. Chipset fan. Um, just have a little instruction book and the parts listed on there. Yes, and a place for your doorknob where you can say, warning, noobs beware, you will be pwned. Read card add. <laughs> and then an input output shield. Uh, very colorful instruction book for when they put it together. And there's a little cover for the south bridge. I'll show you that later. Okay, so now to open it, uh, so here is the actual motherboard itself, like right, the actual looks of it, it's really awesome. Let's check it out. And yes, yeah, very shiny. Okay, so the first thing that you'll probably notice on this board is that everything kind of seems rotated 90 degrees over to the left right here. Since, as you can see, the dim slots here are normally to the right of the CPU, and CPU socket is normally facing downward. But, yeah, Intel kind of took a different approach at this. And uh, overall, it worked out pretty well uh, for them. And also the chipset is normally below the CPU too. But, um... Anyway, yeah, they did lose a couple of DIMM slots on here, but that still shouldn't be a problem for most people since you can still fit 16 gigs of RAM in the board. So overall, I think it still worked out really well for the Intel. Okay, so just gonna start out with the uh, DIMM slots. Okay, so we're, you can run uh, up to four uh, DIMMs of RAM, uh, DDR3 up to 1600 megahertz. Uh, of which three of them you can run in triple channel mode on these blue color slots and then you should probably just leave it like that and then but if you do need extra RAM you can always put uh, another module in the black slot right here for extra memory. Okay so we have the heat sinks for the power going to the CPU another heat sink for the x58 chipset of which this is where you can add the fan on the top if you need it, uh, or on the side actually, yeah, but um, if that's necessary, I, I don't think it really is necessary, but then you have the 24 pin power connector for the motherboard main power supply. Okay, yeah, and after that, I don't know, so you have six uh, SATA 2 ports, three gigabits uh, per second for each of them running off the Intel ICH-10R South Bridge right here for the controller. And this is also where I really have, don't see why you'd ever want to do this, but you can stick the little Intel logo on there and overheat your South Bridge right there. But um, anyway, I, yep, it's, it's pretty nice. You have six of them and then you have the CMOS battery right there. Um, and then, after that, you have yeah, fan connectors, 
Let's see. A, you have two for the PCI Express, the PCI slots. You have two PCI Express X16 slots right here. We're going to run, yeah, Crossfire uh, SLI, two graphics cards. Um, yeah, before they didn't support SLI, but now they do with the BIOS update. Um, two PCI Express X1 slot, PCI Express X4 slot, and just a standard PCI. And then you have also Molex connector right here if you need extra power for graphics cards. Same thing, SATA power connector right there. Um, and yeah. So and then for the actual uh, inputs, outputs, everything, you have 7.1 channel audio right here. Uh, pretty standard. And then just SP diff optical out, gigabit ethernet port, uh, eight. USB 2.0 ports right here, um, a FireWire port, and two eSATA ports uh, running off of a Marvel controller. Okay, so overall, this is a great motherboard, amazing price to value ratio. Uh, has pretty good overclocking potential on it for the i7 CPUs. Uh, and beats pretty much every motherboard within its price range. Uh, it had, now, the only thing that we really didn't like about it, is, well, it's kind of your fault if you did it. I don't know why you'd want to put that on there again. That would kind of just defeat the purpose of the heat sink on the south bridge. But uh, overall, again, this is great motherboard for the price. So if you do buy this motherboard, Beware noobs, you would be pwned. So that's it for tech news today. Just want to say thanks for watching and thank you Intel for giving us the opportunity to review this motherboard. And also we have a bunch of other enthusiast parts coming up for review, so don't forget to subscribe.